Hello, my name is Dr. Magda Perinell here at Revolutions Naturopathic, and today we're going to talk about asthma. What is asthma is actually a chronic disease of the respiratory system, specifically of the bronchioles and the alveoli. So that means that there is constriction of the bronchial airways that is triggered by a TH2 response of the immune system. Um, it is not innate immunity. And so what happens, there's a tightening of the airways and there is less gas exchange at the alveoli. And that causes that characteristic wheeze that we hear sometimes with asthmatics. Not only is there bronchial constriction, there is mucus secretion and buildup in the lining, which makes the breathing difficult. Um, so patients are able to breathe, but it is very uncomfortable and it doesn't feel uh, satisfactory. A lot of times people will think that asthma means you can't breathe. You actually can. It's just very compromised and very uncomfortable. So what are some of the uh, symptoms and signs of asthma? Uh, we have a cough. It's usually dry and sometimes there's a vibrational noise at the end or sometimes there's even a barking cough. Um, it can be a productive cough, but that's usually in conjunction with a cold, sinus infection, or bronchitis. Uh, there's shortness of breath. There is a gasping for air. And the reason why I put that in quotes is because sometimes the person is not even aware that they're having to shrug their shoulders, they're, they're ha having to use their accessory muscles to help them breathe while they're talking. And sometimes they are aware of it. Um, there's a headache sometimes due to constant cough, and there could even be a chest pain because there is a constant cough or the tightening in the chest. So just naming all these symptoms, it, it sounds like it could be related to COVID, but you have to understand that most times a person who is an asthma sufferer has, has dealt with it in the past before, and they are very aware of a flare-up. Uh, we did talk about the characteristic wheeze. Sometimes it's audible, sometimes it's not. Uh, to a person outside of themselves. And sometimes there's difficulty sleeping at night. So if the person who's suffering asthma has made it through the day feeling uncomfortable, uh, sometimes it can get worse at night because of all of the particulate matter collection that they have gone through about their day. And children can be fussy and that's important to know because some children are are old enough but not as self-aware to articulate themselves and definitely you want to pay attention to our kiddos who cannot speak very well for themselves yet. Diagnosis is usually based on clinical symptoms with a doctor um, but if we wanted to do testing it would be through a pulmonary function test that's basically giving a, an, a forceful expiration uh, several times in succession and dependent on how close those numbers are, the doctor can make the differentiation between asthma and non-asthma respiratory conditions. Medical history is very important when speaking with the doctor. Uh, sometimes there is a chest x-ray, not all the time. Clinical symptoms, doctors really rely heavily on clinical symptoms because that seems to be adequate for diagnosing. Uh, the last way to diagnose is a methacholine challenge that's no longer used. What methacholine is, is basically it is a drug that increases bronchoconstriction and then the doctor would administer a bronchodilator or some type of rescue uh, to see how you respond. Obviously due to ethical reasons and also pushing the patient more into danger, they no longer use it. Uh, different types of asthma. So uh, one is environmental triggers. So environmental meaning grasses, trees, pollen, uh, can trigger asthma, allergies uh, like to foods or animals, uh, even cleaning solutions, etc. cetera. Uh, exercise induced, basically that's self-explanatory. And then we have bronchial. So a bronchial asthmatic is basically gonna be, I'm not gonna say the true asthmatic, but there are the people that have to be aware of any of the previous three that can cause their asthma to flare up. And the last two, um, eosinophilic, that's a type of white blood cell that we find to be increased with some asthma sufferers, and that's the only thing that we're finding. And then there's the Sherg strauss syndrome. Sherg strauss syndrome is autoimmune. It's usually adult onset, and it affects the small and medium-sized vessels. 
there's increased eosinophilic count with this condition as well. Uh, risk factors and causes. Sometimes there's a family history and sometimes there is not. Don't discredit your patient uh, and rule out asthma if they do not have family members who have it as well. And in that case, I fall into that uh, line. Also, indoor carpeting. Um, I know that in modern um, construction and homes, there, there's a tendency not to have carpet, but they, it still does exist. And mind you, if you're not vacuuming every day, there is a chance for carpet to collect dust, particulate matter, pollution, animal, and human hair. Tobacco exposure, this is something that can flare up asthma very, very quickly. And someone doesn't have to be smoking around the asthmatic for there to be a flare up. It can also be secondhand smoke. It can simply be on somebody's clothes, hair, or skin, and even furniture. Uh, firewood or fireplace use, you're gonna pretty much find these um, in maybe a more rural communities. There are some homes who have it in suburbia, but just wanna be mindful that particulate matter from both of these can cause asthma flare-ups. Uh, cats and dogs, and I would say cats is pretty notorious for causing uh, asthma, so you want to be careful. It is connected to the, pro the saliva proteins in a cat's and in dog hair. Uh, living quarters, so that's going to be in the inner city or even close to a factory in a rural area, and it's pretty much pro being proximal to uh, pollution that can trigger the lungs to, um, to react. And cold or hot weather. Some asthmatics actually respond better to living in hot weather, weather and some react better to living in cold weather. So you do have to keep track of the person's history uh, to pinpoint where are the trouble spots. And pregnancy. Sometimes during pregnancy, because of increased progesterone, because the fetus is um, using some of mom's resources to survive, her immune system is a little down and she may be more prone to asthma attacks. Communication doc with doctors is key. And I always say this because this is where history taking is important. And if you're able to communicate that with your doctor, the doctor can make more, uh, rely on those clinical uh, diagnoses. Uh, and if you do forget and um, maybe your child, you're not around your child or you forget for yourself, track your symptoms, keep a diary, that can help you be able to uh, reflect on the history. And don't be afraid to ask questions. Quick overview of pharmaceuticals. Uh, first line is quick acting inhaler. Some of the examples are Pro Air Ventolin. Uh, Primatine Mist is over the counter, it is FDA approved. Uh, then you have your long acting inhalers. Uh, that's if your quick acting inhaler is being overused or not adequate. Long acting inhalers are usually given to COPD, other COPD patients because asthma is considered uh, under COPD. Um, but your long acting inhaler is going to be usually for the, uh, the people with emphysema or chronic bronchitis. The next line would be steroid inhaler. So if your quick acting inhaler is being overused or not effective, your doctor may prescribe you a steroid inhaler. Pomacol, Advair, Flovent, Alvesco, Qvar, these are some examples. So a, a steroid inhaler, um, it is not a rescue. So that, that does mean, and that does mean that you have to educate your patient that they are not to use it when they need uh, additional breathing support it is something that has to be continuous and, and, and regular so that they can reap the benefits of it. Um, if the doctor is diligent, um, the doctor will be able to prescribe a nebulizer treatment for at-home use. And it's going to also be pretty beneficial for our moderate to severe asthmatics so that they are not visiting the hospital urgent care as much. So nebulizer treatment with compressor, that means that the solution goes into a chamber and the patient will breathe it through a mouth apparatus or a mask. And if the inhalers or the nebulizer treatment is not bringing down the asthma flare-up, then a short-term steroid therapy, which is gonna last five or six days, can be prescribed. Uh, some additional at-home support that can be very helpful, shower mist, you don't try to close the door so that the steam can help open up your lungs. It's pretty much creating like a sauna at home. 
uh, steam. If you don't want to do it in the shower, you can just put some boiling water um, on the stove. You just have to be very careful because steam can burn your skin. Another uh, popular one is coffee. Um, not tea because coffee has more caffeine and caffeine has the effect of opening up the lungs. That can be very helpful as well. And also adequate ventilation. So you have to be careful with this because if you're opening up a sliding glass door or window and you're next to a chlorinated pool or a lake or a sea or a factory, that breeze of air is not going to be helpful uh, for asthma or relaxing your lungs. Also, uh, covering your neck and chest or being in a cool area. So for those asthma sufferers who benefit from being in warmer conditions, covering your neck and chest during cooler times, even rainier weather is probably helpful. And for those asthma sufferers where cooler weather is better, then you want to, rem you want to keep your area cool as possible. And then also rest. That's also going to be very helpful so that you don't ex uh, cause excitation to your emotions, which can also flare up your lungs. All right, so if at-home care and support doesn't work, we might have to visit the hospital. So what can happen during a hospital visit? They may or may not do a chest x-ray, like I said, to differentiate between asthma and other respiratory conditions. They may provide you with a nebulizer treatment in the hospital. Sometimes they won't give you a nebulizer treatment. They'll give you just some oxygen support, and that's very helpful. And if a nebulizer treatment is not helpful, or if the doctor feels that your asthma is severe enough, they will give you an injection. Um, it, it's usually one or two injections, and then they will stop at that. For the eosinophilic and the adult onset Strauss asthmatic sufferers, you may be administered IV immunologic, uh, and that's usually going to be in the hospital. All right, so if quick urgent care or emergency care is not working, that you will be hospitalized. And hospitalization is usually I, IV administration and some observation. And you usually are better overnight or two days. Now, in the emergency situation called status asthmaticus, that means that your asthma is not responding to anything, whether it's any type of inhaler, any type of steroid, any injection, oxygen, nebulizer treatment, it's not responding to anything, your asthma is getting worse, therefore you are under respiratory distress. So you can be provided epinephrine or non-invasive uh, ventilation. All right, care. Half of the battle with asthma is really environmental and it's not really reliant on the medication. If you're able to control um, and, and guide what you're around, then that's gonna be very helpful. And we've already touched on this. Uh, carpet in the home, pets, tobacco smoke. I will warn patients against marijuana as well to you know, pay attention. Uh, where you are sleeping or where you are stationary, if you are studying, if you're reading at home, and if you're, if you're in a library, are you being subject to a draft that is um, making your breathing uncomfortable? You want to monitor your act activity level in our younger people um, because they're, like I said, they're not as self-aware and also emotions. Um, going high to low a lot of times can make your asthma a little bit worse and in our younger children as well. All right, some environmental continued. Oven cleaner is notorious for causing asthma attacks. You want to be very careful with oven cleaners. Bleach is another irritant, bug sprays, Fragrance. Fragrance can be from perfumes, colognes, plug-ins, air fresheners, um, uh, what is it, powder for ca uh, carpets. Any of those can uh, increase asthma frequency, so you want to be careful. Dust in the home. This is very easy to do, but this is also notorious for the building up of the asthma flare-up. So you want to check your baseboards, fan blades, blinds, and um, surfaces. So in all of these uh, examples, there are alternatives. So look for those. All right, so natural therapies. First one, a, a very good one is vitamin C. Why? Because it lowers the histamine response. Whenever there's an allergy, our body releases histamine, and that is what causes 
are symptoms, whether it's a runny nose, whether it's a cough, and in the case of an asthmatic, it's a cough and mucus secretion in the lungs. So vitamin C supports collagen synthesis and it protects the lung tissue. So it's going to provide and support better oxygen exchange. Also vitamin C is gonna decrease infection. Magnesium, magnesium uh, we are usually deficient in because of the lessened return in our diet and the convenience of convenient foods. Um, magnesium is a very effective bronchodilator. It calms the neurological system. And if you have a patient who also has high blood pressure, insomnia, constipation, um, e any one of those, magnesium can do double duty. Um, in an attack, it can divert a severe attack or a worsening of the asthma. So that's another uh, application of IV magnesium administration. Food allergies is very important because if the body is reacting to something that is causing an immediate or delayed reaction, then it is going to increase the inflammatory response. And since an asthmatic person has compromised lungs, then that those food sensitivities are going to increase the um, frequency or the severity of the asthma. And something that is uh, usually connected to increases in asthma is sulfites. Sulfites is, is a preservative that's often used in wine, dried fruits, or canned goods. So you wanna avoid sulfites as an asthmatic. And of course, gut health. Gut health is very important in a lot of situations because our immune system is mostly in our gut. Um, so it can help temper or decrease those food sensitivity reactions that we talked about and reduce the cascade effect uh, from our immune system. Additional therapies uh, would be fish oil because that reduces uh, inflammation, herbal combinations. We have inula, we have brindelia, we have a lot of herbs that can help with lung support. And also we have NAC and glutathione uh, which are used orally, uh, that can be used in the nebulizer uh, fashion, but you wanna be careful with NAC because past a certain dosage on a daily basis can actually make your asthma worse. Contact information for Revolutions Naturopathic. Uh, our phone number is 916-351-9355. You can call the number and make a free 15 minute consultation with any of our doctors, including me, Dr. Perinell. And our website is www.revolutionsdocs.com. And we're also on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for your time.